Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, welcome to the grandiose finale of the Blackwell Legacy, where I'm just gonna pretty much do like I do with every other video, and just start it right now. Grandiose finale, folks. So let's just go ahead and get everyone up to speed. We just got done talking to Susan, the last of the surviving three friends that used a Ouija board to summon a specter by the name of the Deacon. And we told Susan that we in fact do believe that she is actually being haunted by this Deacon guy who won't shut up. And he's already driven two girls to suicide, and Susan tried to commit suicide, but she failed. So she ended up in the same hospital that our aunt was in for like 20, 25 years. But at any rate, we get done chatting with Susan and leave her to whatever she does in the hospital hospital and once we get outside her room we notice that it is dark outside now yeah things are really coming to a head and we're about to close this case out but first we have to return to susan's room and talk to her one more time i know we were just there but you see we had to leave the room and notice it was dark and then go back in the room because noticing that it was dark outside triggered an event that allowed us to get a key item that we couldn't otherwise get yeah it's a little bit frustrating this puzzle if i'm gonna be honest with you you, but maybe this is more of a me problem because again i did not exactly get in sync with the blackwell legacy but then again i've been out of touch my whole life people still use dos right so i bet you're wondering what's the key item guy well susan please explain it to us i have to take a diuretic pill to fix that and i'm just sick of peeing all the time now that i know i'm just haunted and not really crazy i don't see why i have to take it i don't care if i retain water and get fat i just want to stop peeing <laughs> is she for real? Yeah, Joey just cannot believe that the moment we walked into this room, Susan started talking about her diuretics and how she got tired of peeing all the time. Yeah, um, a bit of a forward conversation we're having, but hey, I guess we've made a new friend. I've been palming the pills. Is that bad? I can't answer that. Well, good thing we're not a doctor because maybe her life's in danger. I don't know. The only pills I've ever taken have been fruity flavored and chewable. Well, I was hoping you could do me a favor. What? Be a drug mule for me, please. Yeah, that's what Susan wants. She wants us to take her pills out of the building so then people don't catch on to the fact that she's not taking the pills that she needs to take. But whatever, well, we got diuretics now. So what the hell can we possibly do with diuretics other than have a very interesting weekend? Well, how about give them to a dog? Come in! Let's just go ahead and take advantage of our newfound friendship with our neighbor by feeding her dog some pills. But first, it appears that the dog knows what's up, which makes sense because, well, none of the dogs go to the dog park anymore because there's a ghost girl there. Moti, be nice. Just one moment. <clears throat> boogity, boogity, boogity. I'm at a loss. He never acts like this, never. So I guess she hasn't taken him to the dog park recently, or at least since the dead girl's been there. How long has she been there? But whatever, we got more important matters to deal with. Like shoving a diuretic into a dog treat that our new friend gave to us to feed our dog so he'd be friends with the dog too, completing the circle of friendship, which we're taking advantage of by making the dog have to tinkle, so then we can take it outside into the dog park. Yeah, yeah, that's all a very confusing, kind of convoluted sequence of events, but it's absolutely necessary if you're going to beat this game. It's still really weird, though. Feeding the dog diuretics, take it to the dog park to show it to a ghost girl. Just saying it out loud makes it all the weirder. If you're going to be friends, this is a good opportunity for you to bond. Oh, sure. I don't mind at all. Thank you so much. Moti gets cranky when he doesn't get his way. Just take him to the park until he goes. It shouldn't take long. So we're doing it, folks. We are taking the dog to the haunted dog park where it's probably going to have a pretty rough go of it. Think about it, it's going to be around two ghosts. Jesus, it's probably going to blow its mind. I mean, we saw what happened was around just one. Hey there, bright eyes. It's me again. Well, I guess those diuretics have a sedative component in it, because the dog does not seem to care about the hot double ghosting action we got going on here. But anyway... We just gotta tell the girl to go look at the dog. Cause you see, she wanted to be a vet. So, by showing her the dog, she'll realize she's dead. And then she'll stop haunting places. Oh, Joey, just tell the folks what's going on. See the dog over there? The Boston, Boston Terrier? Terrier? Good, good, you know your breeds. This Boston Terrier is not feeling too well. I was hoping that you could take a look at him. I... Yes. Yes, yes I can. I know a lot about dogs. So we heard. That's why we came to you. 
But they won't let me help them. They always run away. This one won't. So can I ask why won't this dog run away? Is it like used to ghosts now after being yelled at by Joey? Well, I guess we can go with that. But hey Rosa, you should at least be holding on to the dog's leash. I'm just saying not only is there probably some law in New York City that says you have to have your dog on a leash, but I'm also pretty sure the dog could freak out being around a ghost that it's not familiar with. So this is your dog, huh? Um, yeah, sort of. Hi little guy. What's your name? Damn, this is a bold dog just walking up there, not yapping, not doing nothing. Maybe Joey smells funny. <laughs> right. Aren't you the cutest little thing? Hmm. Your ears look okay. No signs of inflammation. Now I'm just going to open your mouth. That's... odd. I don't feel any breath. I don't feel anything. I... I'm sorry. I remember. I'm dead. Yep. I killed myself. I had no choice. Can you tell us what happened? My friends and I, we played a game. A Ouija board. We thought it would be fun. And you called something? Yes. He called himself the Deacon. It's kind of hazy now, but I remember his voice in my head. Screaming. What did he say? I don't know. It didn't make any sense. He just kept asking me to help him. But he wouldn't say how. I tried ignoring him, but he just got louder and louder until I took the pills and... Shh. It's over now. Damn, Joey, she may want to talk about it a little bit. She just realized she's dead and she committed suicide because a ghost was haunting her. I'm just saying she could use a friendly ear to work through this very difficult phase in her life. You know, it's not every day you realize you're haunting a dog park. So what now? Now? Now, we're going to send you where you need to go. Here, take this and hold on tight. You ready? I guess so. Good. Now pull. Yeah, you and me both. So yeah, we're just gonna be all passed out in the dog park with a dog over us and a ghost. It's just, you know, there's weird things that happen in the middle of the night in New York City, I'm just saying. So yeah, now we're in our brain and we're just gonna tell her, walk into the light. Hello? Yeah, hi! I'm not sure if we've met. I'm Rosangela. I know! You brought the dog to me! You brought me back to my senses. And then you brought me here. Thanks so much! Well, damn. She's taking this whole situation extremely well. Just tell me what to do. Just head towards that light. The light. Right. Like every cliche in the book. Except this time, it's real, and it's not a narrative cliché put into a narrative experience. Well, either way, I'm glad it's over. And hey, you'll make sure Susan's okay, right? Sure. Well, here goes. See ya. See ya. Well, that was a delightful first time sending a ghost off. No crying, no begging for your life, no nothing. It's just smooth sailing. Wow, this whole ghost thing's pretty easy. But oh yeah, we're not done yet. Just because we let the dog park ghost go doesn't mean we're done ghosting. No, we have to deal with the deacon now. And to do that, we have to return yet again to Susan's room. But first we got to deliver the dog. Oh, oh, there you are. I was just about to go to bed. I'm sorry we took so long. Not to worry. Did you have fun, Moti? Did you have fun? <coughs> of course. Well, good night, Rosa. Thanks again for helping me out. So our neighbor lady seems completely cool with the fact that we were gone for what I assume was a long time in the middle of the night with her dog. Kind of a weird lady, and no doubt she'll make us watch some really strange sideshows at some point. But anyway, we have to go back to Susan's room now. But we can't just waltz in there because the security guard is going to be like, no, visiting hours are over. And I guess he's working a double or something because he's been here all day and now all night. But whatever, we just got to puzzle our way to Susan now. 
fuse box key? I could probably do something with this. Yes, in case you couldn't tell, we just stole a fuse box key. By making Joey waltz over to the radio, he just kind of does that on his own. And then we steal the key, because this security guard has no peripheral vision. And you can guess what we're going to do with the fuse box key, can't you? I hope you- You better f- yeah, the funny thing is, if you let Joey tell you what he has to tell you, which is basically hide, you'll get caught. But whatever, let's go head on to Susan's room now. She's asleep. Yeah, like a baby. It won't be long. Before what? Before that. Please. Please. Can't you help me? Please. I don't know what to do. I don't want to burn. Please. The others are gone. You're the only one. Please. You can't hear me here, but you can hear me in your dreams. Please. Wake up and help me. Well, there's the deacon, and he definitely has some problems to deal with. And good thing we can help him, because, you know, we're a median, and that's what we do. Hey! Ignore them, Susan. Listen to me. Help me. Please! I'm talking to you, clown shoes. Clown shoes? Come on, Joey, that's a terrible insult. The man doesn't even have shoes. Hell, he doesn't even appear to have feet. You're... You're talking to me? Yeah, so can you calm down long enough to tell me what's going on? I... I can't. You're like me. What do you mean? Dead. Like me. Wait a minute. Just a goddamn minute. You know you're dead? Yes. Well, that certainly saves time. We can help you. Here, grab a hold of this. No. Get that away from me. What the hell is wrong with you? You need saving. We're here to save you. What's the problem? I can't. What are you so scared of? You're stuck, right? We can help you move on. No. I don't, I don't want, want to. You don't want to? No, I... I'm afraid. Oh, you're afraid, are you? You believe this guy? I don't know, Joey. This is my first day. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. You handle this situation. All right, Mac. Spill. You've scared these girls literally to death, and I want to know why. What are you so afraid of? I... I don't, don't want to burn. Burn? Oh, oh, I get it. You think you're going to hell. But the devil himself. He told me. Please don't make me go. You're scared of the devil, huh? Yes! Yeah, well, I don't see any devil. There's just you and me. And you know what? I'm worse than any devil you'll ever see. Hey! I've been doing this for 40 years, bucko. Every ghost I meet goes to their final rest one way or the other. You're scared? I don't give a rat's ass. Two people are dead because of you. So take the damn tie and let's get this over with. No! You can't make me. Don't make me burn, please! <laughs> Hurts, don't it? Oh, damn, so ghosts can punch each other, huh? Joey's just really working this guy over. Now, we could stop him and try to sweet talk him into grabbing a hold of Joey's tie, or we can just let Joey punch him some more, and the problem will solve itself. I don't believe in hell, buddy, but you have two choices the slight possibility of an eternal torture in hell, or the dead certainty of an eternal torture by me. But you can't! Sure, I can. You gonna stop me? Make your choice. I... Wrong answer. You're hurting him, Joey. Yeah, that's the idea. You got any better ones? Well? Fine. Just, Just stop, stop hurting, hurting me, please. Good boy. Take the tie. Joey, this... This what? It got the job done, didn't it? Now yank this loser out of here so we can go home. Fine. 
Come on, Rosa, you're new to this job. Maybe you need to beat up a ghost every so often to make things go easier for them in the afterlife. Oh well, we inside our brain now with a worked over ghost. I don't, don't want to do, do this. this. Please, send, send me, me back. back. I don't think that's possible. He forced, he forced me here. Me. I... It's... At last, I have found you. Oh, damn. Well, I guess he wasn't lying about the fact that the devil himself was chasing him. Because that looks like the devil himself. No! I told you! There's no escape! What is that? Oh, crap! Joey? Joey! Get me out of here! Stay away. Stay away! There is nowhere to go. You cannot return to the mortal world. You can only go through me. Well, hopefully that route's not through your cod piece, sir. Accept the punishments for your sins and come with me. Help me, please. You brought me here. You have to save me. You have to. Fool, no one can save you now. I'll give you a moment to prepare for the eternity to come. But then you are mine. What is that thing? It's come to take me to hell! Just like it always said it would. Well, fortunately, the devil's a very generous man. We'll give us pretty much all the time we need to solve this puzzle. And all we gotta do is pick up the only item we can pick up, and that's a rock that's laying around in our brain. Why the hell is there a rock laying around in our brain? I do not know. And then we have to talk to the ghost about his flask, and he informs us that he used to keep whiskey in it, which gives us a new clue that we can blend with another clue to create a new question that we can ask the ghost. The deacon is carrying his sins, and the deacon is carrying his flask. Could this be symbolic? Or possibly very literal. Get rid of that flask. Huh? Your flask! Get rid of it! My flask? Why? Just do it! But, but I can't! Why not? Because it, it's my flask. You want to be free of that demon? Trust me. Well, okay. You no longer carry your sins with you, dead one. But they still taint this place. That is not enough to save you. But crushing the flask with that cobblestone laying around in our brain is enough. It is done. The sins have been abolished from this place. And my claim on you, dead one, is gone. Move on in peace, and be troubled no more. Ah, well isn't that devil just a sweetie? He wanted this ghost to face his crippling alcohol addiction before he moved on to the next life. I always knew Satan was one of the good ones. He's gone? I think so. He's gone. I'm, I'm free of him. I'm really free. All this time, it's all so clear to me now. Like my head was full of cobwebs and now they're gone. I... All those people who died, they killed themselves because of me. And what do you think about that? I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing, but that doesn't excuse it. I spent most of my life as a drunk and most of my death as a murderer. I was worried about going to hell before. Maybe I'm okay with that now, now that I know I might deserve it. You seem strangely happy about it. I'm just happy to know. You see, I was a religious man once, before disease took my wife away and I took to the bottle. If I'm going to hell, well then maybe I can still spread the word of God there. Well that's just kind of a weird notion. Be like a Jehovah Witness in hell knocking on your door while you're burning. Be like, hi, I'd like to talk to you about the guy who's forcing you to go through all this pain for your sins. But whatever, happy ending I suppose. Jesus Christ, kid, you alright? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. What took you so long? It got a little complicated. Well, I'm just glad you're okay. And that no nurse came in while you were passed out on the ground, because that could have been pretty difficult to explain. Let's get out of here. I need some air. I know the perfect place. He's at peace now, I guess. 
wherever he is. I saved him, I think. Gave him some hope, at least. He's getting no more than he deserves. No more than any of us deserve. I guess. Did you have to hit him? It was the only way, darling. I didn't see you coming up with any bright ideas. Sometimes the best idea is a punch in the gut. Joey? Yeah? Why did Auntie stop? Stop what? Stop doing this. This ghost saving or whatever it is we do. Oh. Ah. It was you. Me? She wanted to take care of you. Wanted to do it right, she said. Stop listening to me. Stop saving the ghosts. Just put all her effort into taking care of you. And then she fell into that weird coma. Yeah. I see. I guess there's a lesson in that. Never take care of children, otherwise you'll fall into a coma. Oof! Well that does it ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between. I am done with the Blackwell Legacy. Part one of the five part series that makes up the Blackwell universe. And I have to admit, it's probably not the strongest entry in the series. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not for an instant trying to say that the Blackwell Legacy is a bad game. Far from it. It's just that when you compare it to the rest of the Blackwell series, it definitely stands out as the weakest link, which perhaps goes to show you just how strong the rest of the series is. Now this game does have its problems. For starters, at the start it's a bit slow and sluggish, and it almost feels like you're caught up in a quagmire for a good chunk of the early game. But once you get past the intro, the rest of the game's pretty much a treat to play. It's a well written story and for the most part it's well executed the puzzles are pretty fun and albeit a bit easy but still they're fun the mixing of clues together is a fun little feature that spices the game up and makes you feel like an honest to god investigator although there was a couple of puzzles that i didn't really like one being leave susan's room and then come back into it to get the pills which you know, that's a minor grievance. But the whole dog treating the diuretic thing, yeah, that was a bit weird. And I say that because it's the game's only inventory puzzle, and it happens pretty damn late in the game. Honestly, the only way I was able to figure this puzzle out was by messing around with my inventory and realizing that I could mix the dog treat and the pill together, and then I realized I had to go to the dog and feed him the treat. Why? I wasn't really sure. And that happens a lot in adventure games, some more than others. At least in the Blackwell Legacy, it only happens once. And that's that you have to kind of get into the mindset of what the game developer wants you to do. Although sometimes it doesn't organically or intuitively make that much sense. But again, this varies based on the player. This may have been more of a me problem. Maybe the moment you realize that she was talking about diuretics, you're like, damn, I need to make a dog pee. But, well, I wasn't thinking that. And I didn't think the game really hinted at that at any point. Or at least the hints were so subtle I never picked Picked up on it. But again, this varies based on player. But for the most part, Blackwell Legacy is a pretty alright game. It's a bit like an eager puppy. It's just so happy and chatty and eager to see you and so curious about the world, and then it just throws up on itself from time to time and you need to clean it up. Well, the good definitely outweighs the bad, there's still a few little things here and there that kind of just drag this game down for me. And again, I'm just talking about myself. Do not take my opinion as the gospel, but even Dave Gilbert himself has admitted that he would have done a few things differently from Blackwell Legacy, and I suppose that's kind of a part of the charm of this game too. It's really intriguing to take a look back at a developer's work and to see how they've grown and what they've learned and how they've gotten better at making games. But that's just my two cents, folks. Take it for what it's worth, less than two cents. So that does it, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I've been some guy. This has been the Blackwell Legacy, and I'll be back with another Blackwell game. The one that came after this one. I forget what it's called, but I'll be overanalyzing it. Alright, see you guys later. Uh, bye bye. There's hundreds of confused spirits out there, sweetheart. And there's nobody else who can help them. There's just us. Bestowing eternity on every sob story out there. One lost soul at a time. Whether we want to or not.